Right. Now, the the general public is one thing, but some of the people who have come forward recently, the former mayors of Vancouver, um, former attorneys generals of Vancouver or of, uh, of British Columbia, if that is, they've all come forward and uh, and endorsed your group. How have you guys gone about acquiring those endorsements? Well, you know, we we're 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 at a very interesting time when it comes to drug policy because we're really emerging from a time when politicians and policymakers would say one thing in private, which is that they understood that the war on drugs was a total failure, but that they wouldn't be willing to say these things in public. But internationally, what we've seen is a real change in that sense, because we've got people internationally, like the former presidents of Brazil and Colombia and Mexico, Kofi Annan, the former UN Secretary General, businessmen like Richard Branson, all coming forward and saying, you know what, this is a disaster. And they have the courage to say it uh, in public. And, you know, those initial steps have made it easier for policymakers and politicians to come out and say, you know what, I'm not going to look like a crazy person if I speak truth to power. And really, it, people understand that the war on drugs has failed. It's not something that we have to explain to people anymore. I think generally that support for our current drug laws is at an all-time low. So it's sort of a natural fit. And really, you know, this whole project grew out of a public health initiative. And uh, it's scientific experts, it's clinicians, it's doctors, it's the Health Officers Council of BC that are driving this. And that kind of pedigree... um, for people who are really, you know, they, they see the impact of the drug laws firsthand, you know. Uh, Evan Wood, one of the coalition's directors, he, he got engaged when he was working in the emergency room at St. Paul's Hospital in downtown Vancouver and would see gunshot victims of, uh, you know, victims of, of drug crime. And, you know, you see that kind of thing and it's going to have an effect. And I think British Columbians and Canadians more generally and really, you know, people across... North America and Europe have been exposed long enough to these drug laws, and we know their effect. Right, so the climate is definitely changing. And I mean, here. The climate is changing, exactly. And, you know, it, it's the kind of thing that snowballs also, right? So you get an endorsement from one person, and they, uh, you know, they, they refer you to someone else, and every single person coming out and saying that they recognize that cannabis laws and Canada has failed makes it that much easier for the next person. That's right. And, I mean, we saw an immediate reaction after the four former mayors came out. Uh, The current mayor, Gregor, came out and said the same thing and finally uh, really sort of put his voice behind that. So uh, I congratulate you guys on your great success there. I wanted to ask you you why Stop the Violence felt they should focus on British Columbia rather than being something more like, say, a federal organization or in other provinces. Are there plans to expand? Yeah, so, you know, it's, it just happens that we're all based in, in B.C., and uh, B.C. is obviously the largest, uh, has the largest cannabis industry in Canada, and we've also got this horrific drug or gang violence that's occurring because of people, organized crime involved in the cannabis trade. So the links are really clear there. And, you know, BC has really been quite progressive uh, on a whole host of fronts in terms of uh, drug policy reform, like the implementation of inside the supervised injection sites. And in a way, I think that the climate for experimentation is a little bit, uh, is a little bit better in BC. You know, and part of that is because we're so affected by by drugs and the drug industry, and you know things like the cannabis industry. That being said, um, really there are no partners in terms of drug policy reform in the current federal government. They are absolutely ideologically opposed to evidence based drug policy, and that is just the reality of the situation. So it would be a waste of energy to focus. Uh, this campaign on a federal strategy. However, the success that we've had in BC has definitely allowed for this conversation to go national. 
And uh, I was at a conference uh, just over the weekend um, for the Canadian Students for Sensible Drug Policy, and there was a lot of interest in replicating what we've done in BC and other provinces. So hopefully we will see this as sort of like a grassroots, provincial-level effort in a whole number of um, settings across Canada that can then put pressure federally on the, on the government. Very cool. Dan, you said you were a co-author uh, on some of the reports at Stop the Violence BC. Can you tell us about the reports that you were a co-author on? And you also mentioned um, one a future report as well. Yeah, so um, the, the main report that uh, I was a co-author on was the, the latest uh, report by Stop the Violence BC, which really outlines the failure of cannabis prohibition in BC, in Canada, and across North, uh, North America. And... The main point of that was essentially to showcase how, you know, in the face of increasing levels of gang violence, uh, the the argument underpinning uh, a tough on crime, uh, war on drugs approach to cannabis has really failed and led to higher levels of cannabis potency, lower prices, and just has had no effect on uh, levels of use or the availability of cannabis, particularly among young people. And uh, we have an, a report upcoming that is not yet uh, published, but will be published in the next few months, which uh, essentially estimates what the value of the domestic British Columbian cannabis industry would be. So not the export market for cannabis from BC, but it essentially suggests, you know, if policymakers wanted to go ahead and regulate and tax local uh retail sales on cannabis, so, you know, among British Columbians, what would, uh, what would that look like? You know, how much would that generate in revenue? And we do that by trying to estimate what the size of the domestic market is for cannabis in D.C. Wow, sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a stepping stone, again, to, uh, to, for policymakers to take things to the next level. Dan, you're also... Um, a researcher or research coordinator at the International Center for Science and Drug Policy. Can you tell us about that organization and uh, what you guys do there? Yeah, so the International Center for Science and Drug Policy is a network of uh, experts uh, in drug policy from across the world. So we've got uh, membership, I think our membership now counts about 200 uh, MDs, PhDs, and uh, legal experts in drug policy and related fields, and it was it was created to address the fact that you know when scientists when scientists have come out in favor of evidence based drug policies like the supervised injection site in Vancouver or harm reduction in general, you know uh, needle exchange programs, things like that, they've been pilloried by uh, the media in a lot of cases and by government. So what we felt we needed to do was create an organization that addressed the fact that within the scientific community, there is consensus about you know, how effective a harm reduction approach and an evidence-based approach to drug policy really is. And we wanted to create you know, an organization that could uh, essentially demonstrate how strong this consensus is. So the work that we do is generally overviews of specific issues on drug policy, like the, the association between prohibition and violence, or um, you know the effectiveness of global efforts to control the supply of drugs. And we essentially uh, create these reports, and, and they're quite wide weight wide-ranging and international in scope, and we use the power of organization to leverage them and to uh, get people, you know, noticing. Awesome, man. Now, if people want to find out more information about that group, do you guys have a website? Yeah, that group is at icsdp.org, so icsdp.org. Uh, and if you want more information on the Stop the Violence BC Coalition, it's at stopthevioencebc.org. All right, Dan Werb, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it, and I'd love to have you back again soon, maybe when the uh, new report drops. That sounds great, Jeremiah. Thank you so much for having me. All right, thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate it.